Hey everybody, Chuck Carnavel here, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, and of course one of the founding partners here of the Dividend Kings Marketplace service. This particular video is going to be on Archer Daniel Midlands, the agricultural company, and a very cyclical company, I might add. And this was a subscriber request. I had a subscriber actually ask that I cover this stock. And I was kind of remiss. I've been a little late doing it. So here we go. I am going to cover Archer Daniel Midland. But I'm going to do something a little differently here than I normally do. Rather than get into a long or detailed discussion of the business behind Archer Daniel Midland, I gave you some of that in the written portion of the article. I really want to take a look at, from a dividend growth perspective, since this is the dividend kings, from a dividend growth perspective, you know, how can you invest in cyclical stocks with confidence that you're going to get that rise in dividend income, that rise in pay every year that we all covet so much as dividend growth investors. And, you know, frankly, it's quite challenging with cyclical stocks like this. But what I'm going to attempt to do here is show you ways that you can evaluate cyclical stocks that see and determine whether or not the dividend is safe, whether you can rely on it being consistent or so on. And we're going to start by looking at the company from a standpoint of the nature of the beast, if you will, from the operating earnings perspective. And, you know, this is a cyclical stock. And by cyclical, of course, I'm really not referring to the stock price, which I'll take off here. I'm referring to the fact that the operating earnings are very erratic. They rise and they fall. There are periods of, you know, where they can do real well, and then they can be very cyclical over short periods of time. But as a dividend growth investor, I'm actually more focused on cash flows. I like to look at operating cash flows. I like to see operating cash flows covering the dividend. And when I look at Archer Daniel Midland, I get really troubled because operating cash flow, there are times when they have negative operating cash flow, and sometimes they have negative operating cash flow that runs for years. But other times, they generate operating cash flow that's substantially greater than the dividend. For example, in 2009 here, you see operating cash flow per share of $8.29 only needing to cover a dividend of 54 cents. So, you know, that's seven, eight, nine times as much operating cash flow as the dividend requirement. This is really where I think you see the cyclicality of this particular business in this industry. And then when I look at free cash flow, I also get a similar picture to operating cash flow. And this is, to me, the acid test. I always like to say, I want to, you know, if I got free cash flow covering the dividend, I'm pretty confident, pretty sanguine that the dividend is probably safe. But I'm obviously not getting that yet. This is a dividend aristocrat, dividend champion with 45 consecutive years of increasing their dividend. And, you know, how did they do that if they're producing such abysmal numbers? Well, I'll cover that a little bit later here in the video. But let's move on and let's look at, at other metrics. I like to examine a stock from, you know, several different views and different looks. Now, this is EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It's closer to revenue, closer to cash flow, and, you know, it's part revenue, part cash flow, part earnings, if you will. And here we see that, again, we see a very cyclical record where we have a lot of rises and falls, you know, peaks and valleys, but we see EBITDA covering the dividend virtually in every year. So that's kind of helpful. Now, I do want to point out, though, that, you know, when I'm looking at things like a company's stock price, and I'm going to take everything else off of the graph, and I'm looking at a company's stock price, you know, the stock price is very, very cyclical and very, very erratic. It's very difficult to predict where the price of a cyclical stock might go. And this picture of Archer Daniels Midland stock price, I think, gives you a clear perspective of that. Now, from the standpoint of the dividend, which is this white line on the graph, you can see it's very steady and very consistent. Now, I do want to make a point here on this particular company that's kind of important. The company changed fiscal years from a June fiscal year in 2000, and it was either 12 or 13, to a, a December fiscal year. So there was a period where from a standpoint of counting the dividend, they actually had a couple of extra quarters. Make a long story short, if I looked at the financial statements, this dollar three would be 69 cents. It would be an increase from 62. But it shows a dollar three because they had to book a couple of quarters just to get through this transitional phase. But otherwise, this company has had a very, very steady 45 consecutive years of increasing their dividend every year. And if I go and look at this from a standpoint of performance, I want to point out a couple of things. One is they've averaged double-digit dividend growth over this time frame. Now, more recently, if I shorten this time frame, the dividend growth rate has been about half that. It's been about you know, 7 or 8%. And, and actually, if I take even one more year off the graph, this will drop down to a growth rate of about you know, 5.7 to 6% dividend growth. But it's dividend growth nevertheless. 
The other thing I want to point out when I'm looking at long-term performance of this company, because if I go back and look at like EBITDA growth here was high, if I look at operating earnings growth, which is where I started with this video, you'll see that operating earnings growth averaged almost, you know, 9%, 8.8% for this time frame that I'm measuring here. And, you know, I think I can squeeze a little more out of that and actually get it up to over 10% if I'm looking, going back prior to the 01 recession. But it's been very, you know, erratic, but it has been a lot of growth. Now, when I look at performance over this time frame, I discover that Archer Daniels actually produced more capital appreciation, 6.2%. 2% annualized versus 4.9%, turning 10,000 into 32,000 versus turning it into just over 25,000 had you invested in the market. But if I shorten this time frame to a much shorter period of time, again, getting back to the cyclical nature, now we have a period of time where it produced roughly half the capital appreciation at the market. But I do want you to note, even then, it still produced significantly more dividend income in the market. And over the long run, the dividend advantage to investing in Archer Daniels Midland is quite large, at almost 10000 in dividends versus, you know, just over 4500 or roughly twice as much dividend income from a, being an investor in Archer Daniel Midland than being an investor in the market. So the dividend is much more predictable. But we come back to that question, the difficulty, the challenge. You know, I don't have operating cash flow. I don't have free cash flow covering the dividend. So how do I explain this consistent dividend growth? when cash flows have been so cyclical. Well, the best way to do that to me is to go ahead and turn to the company's balance sheet. And I'm starting out here by looking at gross numbers here or the balance sheet in millions of dollars. Now, and the red line on this graph is cash on the balance sheet. And the blue line is the cash required to cover the dividend. So what I want you to notice is, for example, in their best year, 2012 here, they had almost $6 billion, $5.9 billion of cash on the balance sheet, and they only needed $230 million to cover the dividend. The rest of it can be used to amortize debt, et cetera. And virtually in every year, the company had way more cash on the balance sheet than they needed to pay their dividend, which allows them to produce this consistent 45-year streak and allows them to be both a dividend aristocrat and I might add a dividend champion using you know our own Justin Law's Champions, Challengers, and Contenders CCC list. So the company did. Now I can also look at the balance sheet on a per share basis where I'm looking at cash per share versus dividends per share. And again, I see the same picture really. The cash has more than ample to cover the dividend. And that comes from the ability to carry over these large advantages where in the good years, the company generated huge cash flows. And in the weak years, they generated negative cash flows. But by carrying over cash from the good years to the lean years, we end up getting the balance sheet you know, numbers that look like this. We have more than ample cash to cover the dividend. Now, there are some other challenges that while I'm in the fund graphs here that I might want to um, point out. If I look at things like gross and net profit margin, for example, you'll see that the company generates relatively low gross margins, you know, in the high side in the 7% range, on the low side in the 4 and actually in the 3% range and the 4% range. And net margins are run in the 2% range and maybe occasionally get up to 4 or 5%. So this is not a high margin business, but it is an agricultural company. And therefore, it does tend to do, you know, steady business. I can also look at this from a standpoint of, you know, looking at revenues, which is, you know, the top line, if you will. And when I look at the company from the standpoint of revenues here, I see very, very strong revenues. And again, these revenues are, you know, more than ample to cover the dividend. You can't even see the dividend when I put the dividend. It's there, but you can barely see it. So the company does generate a lot of revenue. They don't do a lot of gross and net margin. They do have, you know, trouble with their cash flows. But from a standpoint of looking at it from the dividend growth investor's perspective, this has been a company you can count on. It's A-rated. This is why, I think, is because they've been able to generate so much excess cash that they can carry over from one year to the next. It's only got 32% long-term debt to capital, which is attractive. You know, it's even in, in today's world, especially even with low interest rates, you see a lot of leverage in a lot of companies. There's very little, relatively speaking, with Archer Daniel Midland. And the company is really capable of meeting its obligations and paying you a dividend and increasing that dividend every year. So, you know, you don't necessarily invest in these cyclical stocks for capital appreciation, although you can get capital appreciation. But I'm known as Mr. Value. Valuation and valuation is critical to me.
So let's kind of close this by looking at the stock from a standpoint of value relative to the stock price and in conjunction with fundamentals. And I'll go back to my operating earnings. It's trading you know, on the orange line here, which is my, I call it fair value reference line. I've got an earnings yield of 6.4%. That's a little shy of my six and a half to seven that I like, but it's close enough. But it does offer a dividend yield of 3.1% here, which I like. The company, again, is A rated, as I mentioned before. And it does have a very strong history of paying a dividend, which I like. And so for me, the nature of the fact that, that forecasting earnings growth on a company like this is very, very challenging. You can see there are a lot of years where, they, where the analysts miss the earnings. You know, like in 2016, they expected the company to make 306 only earn $2.16. That was, you know, a miss by f over 40%. That's, you know, more than half. So when they miss, they miss. If I look at it from a one-year and a two-year you know, summary perspective, you can see that more than half the time, you know, when the analysts were forecasting one year with a 10% margin of error, they missed it more than half the time. And with a better margin of error, a 20% margin of error for a two-year forecast, they still missed it 45% of the time. So although I'm looking at some pretty nice forecasts for the next couple of years, I do think those forecasts ought to be looked at with somewhat of a John Desai, or at least a certain amount of skepticism. So what can I count on? I like to run the average dividend yield here. And when I'm looking at a signal stock, whether it's Archer Daniels Midland or a Caterpillar, you know, or, you know, any company like that, you know, that's relatively cyclical in nature, I tend to look at dividend yields relative to historical norms. And a good time to buy this stock is when I can get a dividend yield, you know, that's significantly above their norms. And you can see back here when the valuations were high, you know, dividend yields tended to be low. Like here, we only have a 1%, 0.9% dividend yield. And when, when the value was real low, and this is 2020 hindsight now, we had, you know, a dividend yield over almost 4%, 3.78%. We ended last year with a dividend yield of 3.02, and we currently have a dividend of about 3.1. So I would say that's above average dividend yield. Now, I would have rather bought this stock, you know, back in March during the COVID crisis when, you know, prices swooned. But I think you could buy it today with a 3% dividend yield and be reasonably confident that you'll get a good dividend growth going forward, a good increase in pay every year based on the reasons I discussed. Anyway, it's very challenging to invest in, in cyclical stocks. I hope this gave you some further insight. You know, I didn't cover a lot about what the company does. I can you know, leave that up to you. I did give you some of that in the written portion, as I mentioned, but it's really a good company. It's a high quality company. Uh, it'll be around for a long time. It is gonna face cyclical operating results from time to time, but their dividend record is really exemplary. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carmel saying thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And give me a like, obviously, by, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking the bell there. And also, you might want to take a look at, we have a link here to the Dividend Kings Marketplace service on Seeking Alpha. If you're looking for good dividend ideas, you might want to check that site out as well. Anyway, thanks for watching.